In this video, we're going to talk about the auto reset event, which is used for signaling between different threads. And the best way to describe it is to use the producer and consumer scenario, right? Because there has to be a signaling mechanism between the producer and the consumer so that the consumer knows whenever there is product produced by the producer. So let's use the farmer and pigs analogy to learn about this signaling mechanism. Let's say we have this farm where we have the farmer. This is the feeding station and then we have some animals. In this case, we have three little pigs. Whenever the farmer produces some food, the farmer will have to let the little pigs know that there's food in the feeding station. Come and consume, right? Come and eat. So the way to let the pigs know is to put out a sign in front of the feeding station and because the pigs are waiting so that once they see the signal one of the pigs will go into the feeding station and as soon as this little pig goes into the feeding station the sign will be automatically taken away so the other two pigs are like okay no sign no food so we're gonna wait for the next one and when this one finishes, it just comes out and continues wait. And there, when there's more food comes, the farmer will hand out the sign again. And this time, maybe this pig goes in, maybe still this pig goes in, maybe another pig goes in. There's not actually a pattern. One of the pigs will be able to get into the feeding station. And again, the sign will be taken away. When the little pig is eating in the feeding station, the farmer is still producing. Right? So it's possible that when the pig is still consuming, another portion of food is ready. So the sign is handing out again. So this little pig goes in, for example, then the sign is automatically taken away. And if the farmer is very efficient, then there's enough food produced for the third time and the sign is handing out again. And the third little pig goes into the feeding station also tries to consume the food right? and the sign is taken away. So this is how the signaling works, right? So with this scenario, you have to understand the most important thing in the scenario, which is this signaling. It's a binary signal. It's whether on or off. When it's on, it's like hanging out of the feeding station. When it's off, it's on automatically taken away. And this is, one thread which is the producer thread and these are the consumer thread of course it doesn't have to be just one producer but let's use the example of one producer thread and multiple work uh, multiple consumer thread and the signaling works this way that whenever there is a product produced the signal remember this is a binary signal and there's only one signal right the signal will be turned on and the consumer who's waiting will be able to consume the product. And once one of the threads starts consuming the product, the sign will be turned off. And whenever there's more product produced, the sign is on again, and a thread will be able to consume. So this binary sign, which is a single binary sign, has only two state, signal state or non-signal state. And whenever the sign is in signal state, one of the threads that are waiting will be able to proceed. If it's off, then the threads will have to be waiting. So let's jump into Visual Studio and see how this works in action. Let's go to Visual Studio and create a new project. And this time we're going to call it signaling auto reset event. All right. So over here, First of all, what is the basic syntax of using the auto reset event? You're going to declare the auto reset event just like you declare any other variable, right? Create an instance of this. There's one parameter here and you have to pay attention. This one is the initial state. So when the program starts running, do you want the sign to be turned on already? Or do you want it to be turned off? Usually at the beginning of the program, I want it to be turned off because I don't have any food. But some programs uh, already have food when the the program starts running. Depending on your situation, you want it to, to be false or true. If you have product already to be consumed, then use true, otherwise use false. 
right? And uh, this auto reset event also has some unmanaged resources. So it's better to use the using statement at the front so that it's always disposed when it, the program exits. Now for the consumer thread, right? The consumer thread will be calling auto reset event dot wait. It's not called wait, it's called wait one. So I'm waiting for one of the product. You can sort of understand it this way, the wait one. The producer, right, the producer thread will be saying, okay, I'm ready. I have some food for you or some product for you. Go and get it. So it's simple, right? So you declare the object and then you wait and you set it to send the signal. So when you say set, you turn on the signal. And once the consumer starts consuming it, the signal is automatically turned off. So that's how it works. Okay, so let's say that we have, want to have a main thread and a worker thread. The main thread is responsible to provide a signal for the consumer thread to either proceed or wait, right? So it's like a traffic cop, right? The main threads are like a traffic cop and the worker thread is like the train is waiting for the signal. Right, so let's remove this and uh, we're gonna use the auto reset event just like this. And uh, we're gonna have a user input. Right, so this is the, the signal that the user provides. And uh, we're gonna use console.write to signal to uh, just provide some information. So server is running type go to proceed, that's it. Now the main thread receives user input and sends signals. Okay, so we're gonna have a infinite loop here and it's waiting for the user to enter something. So I'm gonna say user input equals to console dot read line. And now we're gonna signal the worker thread. Signal the worker thread uh, if the input is go. All right, so if the user input equals, um, let's do a two lower, two lower. So if this in equals go, then we're gonna signal the worker thread. I'm gonna say auto reset event set. Okay, so signals the worker thread to proceed. Now the task for that worker thread, so let's create the task first. So the worker thread is uh, going to do some work here. And again, the worker thread is going to be an infinite loop waiting for the go signal. So I'm gonna say console.write line and I'm gonna say worker thread is waiting for the signal. No. Okay, and then the worker thread is gonna say, I'm going to come here and wait. I want to have a signal. Once it comes over here, the program blocks, right? Blocks and waiting. So once it's actually received the signal, it's gonna to proceed to the next line, which is line 28 here. I'm gonna say uh, worker thread proceeds. And then I'm going to say thread.sleep for maybe two seconds. This is to simulate a processing time. Um, the worker thread proceeds to do some work, which takes two seconds. And then when the user, so here's a green screen line, maybe I'm just going to do this to remove it. Okay. And then when the user provides another go signal, then the worker thread is going to again proceed to do some work. And after two seconds, it's going to come back and wait for another signal. Right. So this is going to be an infinite thing that goes on and on. And before we run it, actually, we need to start the worker thread before the while loop. So here I'm going to say start the worker worker thread and I'm going to say worker thread equals new thread and what kind of work does it do? It does its worker work. So just like this and then we're saying worker thread now start. All right, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, it says server is running, type go to proceed. And then it says worker thread is waiting. So our worker thread is currently waiting. It's like a train is waiting for traffic cop to say go. So I'm going to type in go as the traffic cop and then I hit enter. 
And then it says worker thread proceeds. Two seconds later, it says worker thread is waiting for the signal again. Right? And then you can do this. You can do go and worker thread now proceeds. And now worker thread is waiting for the signal again. You can see how this works, right? As soon as the worker thread says wait, it's just waiting for that binary signal to be turned on. And as soon as you turn it on by saying auto reset event.set, it basically turn on the binary signal. And once it's turned on, one of the worker thread, in this case, when you have one worker thread that is waiting, it will proceed. And as soon as it proceeds, the binary signal is turned off, right? So if we have multiple worker threads waiting for doing the work, then because it's turned off, only one worker thread can proceed. Only one worker thread can proceed. The other ones will be still waiting just because once one of the worker threads proceeds, the signal is turned off again, right? So we can try to do multiple worker threads. So for that, instead of using just one thread, we can use a loop to create multiple worker thread. And instead of uh, 10, I'm gonna use uh, just uh, three worker thread here. And uh, we are going to say thread dot, uh, thread worker thread equals new thread. And again, it's gonna do the same type of work. And I'm gonna provide a name to the worker thread. And I'm gonna say worker i plus one. Okay. And then worker thread dot start. We're gonna start all of the thread. And here in the main thread, it's gonna do the same thing. Uh, just main thread provides the go signal. And in the worker thread here, I want to provide more information. So I'm gonna use string interpolation again. So worker, so I'm gonna remove this. And here I'm just going to say thread dot current thread dot name. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. So, so that we know which thread is actually proceeding. So this one proceeds. Okay, at a dot at the end. Now we can run this again. And this time we have three different worker thread waiting for the signal. So this is like the three little pigs waiting for the food. Now let me turn off this so that the new one can be running. Okay, so we have worker one waiting, two waiting, three waiting. And then I type go, uh, worker one proceeds. And then once worker one finishes, it's waiting for the signal again, right? And if I do two continuously, you can, say, you can see that worker two proceeds, worker three proceeds, and then each one of them finishes and waiting for the signal again. If I enter uh, go three different times, Right, so worker one, two, and three proceeds. You can see that there's no particular pattern who's going to get the uh, get the get the food, right? And uh, of course, our program in this case has flaws. Has flaws. Not all of the food can be consumed, which you can try to fix that with a queue, right? Because if I enter this for like more times, and if I increase the wait time over here. There could be more food produced um, and more signals provide, right? So this could be set for 10 times and only three of them might get the signal because once one of the thread proceeds, the signal will be turned off no matter how many times you have set it. In order to not lose the product, you need to put the product in the queue, which is very similar to the web server scenario that we created, right? We put everything in the queue. And then our monitor thread is like the producer, right? And the other threads are like the consumer threads. And that's everything I want to cover for the auto reset event. Again, I want to emphasize that you can see that we're not using the auto, auto reset event to protect a critical section. We're using it to signal, to send signal between different threads, right? So this is for threads interaction purpose instead of shared resources. However, it's all related. It's all related. We want to uh, send a signal for the purpose of consuming the shared resource. In this case, the shared resource is the signal, go. Although we don't have to 
to get the signal from the worker thread, but most of the case you want to get the data, which is the product. Anyway, this is everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.